And so that's that's our strategy. We're just going to no, try to preserve our money, and we're going to do it by betting on the only obvious thing we can find in the world that is not correlate. Everything else is, is, for the most part, a fiat instrument, and if the monetary supply expands, it's going to be diluted. So you either got to buy the only Picasso, or you, know, you got to buy scarce art or scarce uh, you, things that cannot be produced, or you buy Bitcoin because Bitcoin is that scarce crypto asset that's got hundreds of billions of dollars behind it. Welcome back to Money 101. At the forefront of the financial landscape, there exists a colossal 250 trillion predicament. And according to Michael Saylor, the solution lies in Bitcoin. The billionaire founder of MicroStrategy asserts that every investor worldwide grapples with a common challenge, finding a secure haven for their wealth that doesn't undergo devaluation over time. Saylor contends that for the first time in history, Bitcoin emerges as the definitive answer to this quandary. Stay tuned until the conclusion of the video, where Saylor elaborates on his belief that Bitcoin will parallel the success stories of Google and Facebook, generating trillions of dollars in wealth for early investors. Additionally, it's worth noting that only a small fraction of my audience is currently subscribed. If you appreciate finance-related content, consider subscribing or giving the video a thumbs up. It's a free action, and your preferences can always be altered. Now let's delve into Michael Saylor's insights on the Bitcoin outlook. Bitcoin is pure monetary energy. For the first time in the history of the world, we figured out how to create a software network that will store and channel monetary energy with no power loss. That That's a million times better than a gold network. But it's better than an electrical network. I, if I want to hold $500 million of electricity and I put in a battery, I lose 2% a month. There's a 24% inflation rate on an electric battery. You can only move electricity 500 miles and you lose 6% in the first transaction. Try to move $500 million of electricity from New York to Tokyo. Here's how you do it. You take the 500 million, convert it to Bitcoin, send the Bitcoin to Tokyo for three bucks, convert it back into electricity. And by the way, the magic is not just that I did a transfer for $3 instead of three hundred thousand dollars with gold it would take you a month and 300 grand to do it with gold the magic is i can put the i can put the 500 million dollars 30 years into the future and not lose a nickel of the energy right that's the beauty of this entire network it's it's a, a network to channel monetary energy which is the apex energy Monetary energy is the sum of kinetic energy, potential energy, chemical energy, electrical energy, nuclear energy, all energies flow to monetary energy. We have, we have a software network or a technology network for monetary energy. One last point, Google is an information network. It's worth a trillion dollars because it channels information and video. Facebook's a social network. It's worth nearly a trillion dollars because it channels social energy. People couldn't conceive of it. Bitcoin is a monetary network. It collects and channels monetary energy. It's a little bit more valuable than collecting all your photographs from a shoebox. It's a little bit more valuable than posting photos to your fam friends and family on the holidays. We're talking about tens of thousands of billion dollar entities they've all got a problem their monetary energy is being debased by 10 to 20 percent a year by the expansion of the, of the monetary supply they're all they're all stampeding toward a solution is that going to be derivatives or equities or bonds or what is the solution bitcoin is the first perfected crypto asset that's that serves as a long-term store of monetary energy that's what's going on here it's an invention and it's and and you know like it's john d rockefeller became the richest man in the world because he stored he collected stored and channeled chemical energy it's a simple idea 99 percent of the world doesn't understand it they're new to it. It's it's inconceivable because 
Facebook was an inconceivable idea a decade ago. So that's where we are with this. Something exciting, new, powerful. It's the elemental structure of a, of a totally new set of financial systems, yes. Bitcoin's not a currency. It's not a payment network. Right, currency is the province of the government, always has been, always will be. The IRS sets the tax code for currency. You, it, you can't use Bitcoin as a currency because the tax code is hostile to it. It would generate 100,000 counting entries and tax obligations for no reason whatsoever. And so there's no point in Bitcoin being thought of that. Bitcoin is not a payment network. Apple Pay and Square Cash and PayPal and Alipay are payment networks. They work well. They work a billion times better than Bitcoin or any crypto will ever work. So crypto is inappropriate as a currency, even though people call it cryptocurrency. It's a, it's a, it's a wrong choice of words. We should move it out of the lexicon. We should refer to it as crypto asset. Crypto is an awesome technology for creating a scarce asset as a store of value. The $250 trillion problem is store my value. I just want to put my money in a, in a piggy bank in cyberspace and have nobody take it. It's a very simple idea. Then if I want to spend money, I'm going to convert 5% of it to Apple Pay or Square Cash or PayPal or Alipay. And I'm going to move it around in fiat currency on those rails in a responsible, legal, efficient, fun fashion. And let the governments be the governments. Let the big tech companies do what they do best. And Bitcoin is going to solve this last very simple issue, which is I just need pharmaceutical grade synthetic safe haven asset. Synthetic gold with none of the hangover of gold none of the bad problems, none of the problems with mining and hypothecation and centralization and corruption, but all of the good parts of it, like I put my money in there and a decade from now, I've still got it and it hasn't been inflated away. Yeah, you, know, you just bring us back to the fundamental issue. In the finance world, it's very rare to be able to buy anything you can't print more of. But in the engineering world, it's very rare to find a machine that works unless you plugged all the leaks, unless it respects conservation of energy, the first law of thermodynamics, and it's a closed system. What we're doing, by, by the way, Bitcoin is the singularity where engineering, science, and technology smashes into finance. And for the first time, we can finally apply Isaac Newton's laws and the laws of thermodynamics to protecting our money. And who wouldn't like to have a monetary system that works? I think it's important that people of character and conviction articulate the benefits of Bitcoin to the masses. There are billions of people on this planet that are living in a regime where the currency is collapsing. One billion that we just saw last month. And for them, this is a lifeboat against a currency collapse. If you're living in Argentina or Venezuela or Turkey or Lebanon or most of Africa, if you don't have this, then what, do you, what choice do you have? I mean, they don't have the option to put their money with a hedge fund, you know, in Connecticut, right? They don't have an option to hire some professional money manager and convert it to dollars. So as Jack Dorsey said, this is an instrument for, of economic empowerment. And there are billions of people on the planet who have been deprived of a savings account where they won't lose all their stuff. And so we're going through a transition where people aren't sure what this is. I think it's a moral imperative to stand up and say to people, it's a good thing. It's a thing that's going to make the world better for billions of people that don't have a choice. And, you know, if you're going to criticize Bitcoin, what are you going to do to solve the problems of everybody on the planet that doesn't have liquid wealth in hedge funds in the United States with options? Because it's it's morally incumbent upon you to give them something to, to, to cling to in the event of a currency flood. So the reason we're talking about it is because it's the right thing to do for the world. You know, as for what I think uh, going forward, I think that if your choice is invest your money in bonds that that are going to yield 2% while the monetary supply expands by 15%, 
you're looking at minus 13% real yield as, as if you're calculating asset inflation, right? So that doesn't make any sense. You know, if, if I'm going to put my money into equities, I'm going to gamble. I, I've got to rebalance my equity portfolio every quarter based upon performance and competition and a million moving parts. That doesn't make sense. If I leave my money in cash fiat currency and I know that all the banks are going to print 10 or 20 percent more every year, that doesn't make sense. So the idea of adopting the Bitcoin standard is very simple. It's I'm going to sweep my excess cash flows into a savings bank in cyberspace that's run by incorruptible software that has no agenda other than to just store my value for 100 years. That's it. You know, there's no CEO of Bitcoin. No one can print more Bitcoin. No one can use Bitcoin to do an acquisition or a dilutive acquisition. No, you know, no one can debase the Bitcoin. It's a very simple idea. Take your monetary energy, encrypt it into a cyber, a, a cyberspace bank that's going to hold it in a vacuum where the power won't bleed off and then wait because in a world where everybody's dissipating energy, John, the rational strategy is preserve your energy. Everybody else is dissipating energy either by trading around or by holding bonds that can't keep up with the real rate of monetary expansion or by taking risks. What am I going to do? Five by $500 million worth of liquid art indexes? You know, scarce art index? What am I, you know, it's a, Baseball cards. You know, put yourself in the place of someone that drives a truck for a living. What advice are you going to give them? Right? Because it's like my 82-year-old father, he can't be a hedge fund guy. He can't be picking stocks to buy and sell in a balanced portfolio with exposure to developing countries and with currency hedges on, you know, and is he going to short the 30-year bond and it'll play the yield? It's too complicated. There's billions and billions of people. They just have money and they want to not lose their money. And so that's that's our strategy. We're just going to no, try to preserve our money. And we're going to do it by betting on the only obvious thing we can find in the world that is not correlate. Everything else is, is, for the most part, a fiat instrument. And if the monetary supply expands, it's going to be diluted. So you either got to buy the only Picasso or you, know, you got to buy scarce art or scarce uh, you, things that cannot be produced or you buy Bitcoin because Bitcoin is that scarce crypto asset that's got hundreds of billions Michael of dollars Saylor. behind. Here we have Michael Saylor shedding light on Bitcoin's role in addressing the substantial $250 trillion predicament faced by global investors. Sailor's resolute belief in Bitcoin as an unparalleled solution for safeguarding wealth against devaluation introduces a transformative perspective on the role of digital currencies in our financial landscape. Throughout the video, Sailor draws parallels between Bitcoin and industry titans like Google and Facebook, emphasizing the imminent creation of trillions of dollars in wealth for those who embrace it early. His profound insights not only position Bitcoin as a digital asset, but as a revolutionary financial instrument with the potential to reshape the world economy. I trust you found today's video engaging and valuable. Look forward to catching you in the next one. And as always, wish you the very best.